my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. You hear it all the time, don't you? The world, advertising, businesses, whatever, will say, you deserve a break today. So, why not indulge yourself today? You know, but maybe, just maybe, I deserve a break today, but every day, maybe I should not indulge myself, but choose the voluntary path, willed, in effect, chosen, suffering, like you, Jesus, my suffering Savior. Today in the Mass, we have the reading from Tuesday of the 15th week of Ordinary Time, and it's a selection from St. Matthew. Jesus began to reproach the towns where most of his mighty deeds had been done, since they had not repented. Woe to you, Korotzin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have long ago repented in sackcloth and ashes, but I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And as for you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will go down to the netherworld. For if the mighty deeds done in your midst had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. Wow, this sounds harsh, Lord. For I surely can see myself with not enough faith, not enough living hope, and not all the deeds of charity that you call me to. Certainly it is consoling to hear actually the Alleluia verse chosen to accompany the gospel. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. It's a call to be open, to be called to be a saint today. You truly, Lord, came to have it rough that we might find the way. And we want to follow you. And we have a great help today. You left us your mother for today, not only being a Tuesday of an ordinary week, is the feast day of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And what is this avocation, Mary, that you have? What title it is this that you have been given? This Virgin of Carmel. For you have been chosen you have chosen yourself to be the patroness of the Carmelite order, particularly within the Catholic Church. Well, what is this Carmelite order? Well, the first Carmelites were Christian hermits living on Mount Carmel in the Holy Land, near the north of the current day Israel. They built in the midst of their hermitages a chapel dedicated to the Blessed Virgin whom they conceived of in chivalric terms as the Lady of the Place. And since the 15th century, popular devotion to Our Lady of Mount Carmel has centered on the scapular of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, also known as the Brown Scapular. Traditionally, Mary is said to have given the scapular to an early Carmelite named Simon Stock. The liturgical feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel is celebrated today, on the 16th of July, their patronal feast. What is this brown scapular? People wear it who have entered the confraternity of the brown scapular, associated with the Carmelite order. Special supernatural favors were offered by Our Lady to his order and to all persons who would wear her brown scapular. What is this indulgence? a remission of the temporal punishment due to sin. The plenary indulgence is all of it, the partial sum of it. And how do we receive one of those? Well, today, those who have the brown scapular, do you have one? I do. Gaining this indulgence by wanting to receive it, and then, that's the work of it, to complete a wholehearted detachment from all sin, even venial sins, first other condition, making a valid sacramental confession near the day of the work, receiving Holy Communion in the state of grace, and praying for the intentions of the Pope. Let's indulge ourselves today this way, of seeking to be so sorry for sin and so wanting 
of the spiritual treasures of the church, for the church pours out in indulgences in many ways upon the faithful. The minimum condition for having a partial indulgence is to be contrite in heart. Mary, through your intercession, I will be contrite for all of my sins. I want to go to you as a special protectress and one that reminds me all the time to be holy and pure as you are. Since the Middle Ages, Our Lady of Mount Carmel has been related to purgatory and purgation from sins after death. She is portrayed as accompanied with angels and persons wearing brown scapulars who plead for her mediation. Mary, intercede from me that I may know. No, to seek, actually, to indulge myself in an indulgence, to want to be prepared for my death, wanting to do the wonderful things that indulgences ask me to do, maybe praying a rosary today with someone else and receive, with the conditions offered, a plenary indulgence, or to pray before the Blessed Sacrament, or to begin again the everyday habit of reading a chapter or some time the New Testament. What a great thing it is. Mary, you do intercede for me. Years ago, this, this Mass of Our Lady of Mount Carmel had a sequence, beautiful sequence. I'll read some of it now. Flower of Carmel, tall vine, blossom laden, splendor of heaven, childbearing, yet maiden, none equals thee. Mother so tender, who no man didst know, on Carmel's children thy favors bestow, star of the sea. Strong stem of Jesse, who bore one bright flower, be ever near us and guard us each hour who serve thee here. Purest of lilies, that flowers among thorns, bring help to the true heart that in weakness turns and trusts in thee. It goes on for a while, beautiful, beautiful sequence of Our Lady. May I want to go to her ever so more. An author regarded as an authority on Carmelite spirituality wrote that devotion to Our Lady of Mount Carmel means a special call to the interior life, which is preeminently a Marian life. Our Lady wants us to resemble her not only in our outward vesture, but far more in heart and spirit. If we gaze into Mary's soul, we shall see that grace in her has flowered into a spiritual life of incalculable worth, a life of recollection, prayer, uninterrupted oblation to God, continual contact, and intimate union with Him. Mary's soul is a sanctuary reserved for God alone, where no human creature has ever left its trace, where love and zeal for the glory of God and the salvation of mankind reign supreme. O oh Mary, this is beautiful, this is much. Intercede from them, I may have this zeal, that I might love you that way, and let it bring me to be apostolic, wanting to draw others to heaven through you, through your loving intercession. You are mother of us, mother of so many. Yes, let us pray. Here is another one, another prayer of devotion. O most beautiful flower of Mount Carmel, fruitful vine, splendor of heaven, blessed mother of the Son of God, immaculate virgin, assist me in my necessity. O star of the sea, help me and show me you are my mother. O Mary, most holy, mother of God, queen of heaven and earth, I humbly beseech you from the bottom of my heart to succor me in this necessity, this time of trial, this time of life on earth. There are none that can withstand your power. O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to thee. Sweet Mother, I place this cause in your hands. Joining your intercession for me will be the Carmelite saints, that I might join them praising you, Mary, and your most holy Son. We recall St. John of the Cross, St. Teresa of Jesus, Teresa of Avila, as many understand her, the little flower, Therese of the child Jesus and the holy face, and many more. Sor Benedicta of the Cross, otherwise known as St. Edith Stein, Louise Martin and 
Marie Anziele Gern Martin, the parents of the little flower. And most recently, Titus Bransma, a saint that died in, in the Holocaust. Help me, Mary, through the intercession that you can offer and these holy ones so close to your Son, our Jesus, our Son of God, that I may join all of you in heaven. Thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help for putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.